Hey, everybody. This is Chuck Pressburg from Press Check Training and Consulting. Uh, today, I wanted to do a couple of videos. Uh, I realized I need to do this first video before I could do the second video because um, I'd like to talk about um, a lot of questions have been coming up on the Internet about uh, communications interoperability with respirators, uh, ta tactical uh, community patrol officers, things like that. First responders are being given requirements that they have to wear PPE out in public now as a result of uh, the current uh, pandemic. So uh, there's I, uh, there are uh, pieces of equipment out there like the OpsCore Soder respirator, which are available in communication variants. Uh, so you get this mask, it's got a microphone in it, and it's got a cable coming out of the side. And the officer asked the very, you know, legitimate question of, "Hey, man, uh, how, how do I how do I get from from that microphone to 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 my radio?" That's what today is about. Not just on the soda specifically, but the entire chain of events from uh, ear and mouth uh, to um, the the RT or radio transmitter. So uh, this video is the pre-reading for the actual hands-on video. In this video, we are gonna talk about uh, various radio connectors and uh, cable connections, sockets, ports, or whatever, so that you're educated on the vernacular and you understand, and it is going to empower you to be able to do better internet research. When you're looking at an item, click on the cart, you don't know you're not a radio guy. Um, to make sure that you're that you're not buying the buying the wrong stuff, essentially. So that's why I'm making this video. All right, uh, I am not a radio nerd. Y'all are gonna watch this and be like, "Dude, you're you're totally a radio nerd." But no, nah, for real, I'm not. Uh, but I I absolutely need to make comms or needed to make comms when I was when I was still operational. Uh, so uh, an individual that doesn't understand how the parts of the accessories of their radio work with one another is just like somebody that carries a rifle and does not understand the cycles of function so that they can diagnose uh, systemic malfunctions with their weapon system and replace the appropriate parts to, uh, to reduce their mean rounds between failure, uh, mean rounds between stoppage, excuse me. So, uh, so you got to get educated. You got to understand what's going on with your with your uh, your communications, so that you can have the right parts and cables and everything to to play the Lego piece of it, uh, and then be able to understand what those parts and pieces do. Uh, I'm not going full down in the weeds. So uh, things you're not going to hear today. Anything about impedance amplification of microphones, any of that. Um, if if you have a radio that's working fine and you plug it into an airplane and the whole air crew throws their headsets off, it says, unplug my radio uh, because you're, you're destroying their ICS with your tactical throat mic and earpiece or whatever, that, that's, that's on you. Uh, I will tell you that the thing that is happening is impedance. Uh, I do not know how to fix impedance. That's what radio nerds are for. Uh, this is this is 101 parts and pieces and the nomenclature and vernacular that is used in the tactical community. All right. So starting from the microphone and earpiece uh, area, one of the most frequently used connectors to connect a microphone uh, to a cable, uh, if it is not internal to something like an ear cup is going to be your Nexus two pin. The uniform 173U Nexus two, uh, Nexus two pin connector. Uh, an example of a Nexus two pin connector is Peltor. Boom mic. Boom mic is, re is removable and can be put on either side based on the firer. You'll see that there is a two pin receptacle right there 
for when you move the mic to the other side. The end of the microphone. Cable. Boom mic. Excuse me. You have... I'm not going to pull that one out. The U173U. Okay? The female into that in a plug form is called the 172U. On the older version of the Comtac, piece of kit here called a Y cable, I've got mine uh, zip tied. Um, you have Peltors that are hardwired like these dual com so all of the connections are done inside for the cabling and then you have some uh the original ones they were designed to be active hearing protection that could be communication integrated so your your peltor contact ones you know whatever you didn't have to get them with boom mics and pigtails if you are a flat range shooter guy or whatever this y cable was the piece that turned a ComTac with the addition of a boom mic, turned a ComTac into a communications headset from an active hearing headset. So you had a two pin 173 and a 172 uh, receptacle plug that plugged into different things. The boom mic came into this and this plugged into the back of the Peltor to uh, be able to communicate with the speakers on the inside to give you uh, information. So These are going to be very, very important when we move into uh, the soda and uh, gas masks because uh, that is uh, the primary interface for a lot of aircraft style uh, speaker systems and uh, pilots masks in jet fighters and things like that had been incorporating that two pin design for years and it crossed over into the civilian aviation commercial headset uh, market uh, out there. So if you need any of this stuff, one of the good places to look if you're talking boom mic related stuff is on all of your aircraft um, helmet accessories, uh, civilian pilot uh, websites. You're going to pay a pretty good penny though. Um, if you buy them from there, but at least you know they're they're probably well constructed. Okay, moving on. Nexus U93. Uh, the U93, also known as the Nexus Pigtail. The Nexus Pigtail is a breakaway that allows you to go somewhere with your headset throat mic, earpieces, whatever, something attached to your head and being able to quick disconnect from a tether that is either attached to an aircraft or attached to a radio push to talk, something of that nature. Uh, so the, the, the magic of uh, the U93 was the quick in, quick out. Probably the most prolific quick disconnect used in tactical radio communications today. Um, we'll talk about some of the strengths and, and weaknesses of it in, uh, in the other video. All right, going with the U93, we have two female ends. Uh, and now there's other people that are, that are manufacturing um, different styles. But the first one is your U92. Your U92 is used on uh, your MSA, um, Sorden, um, Peltor brand. You know, there's a bunch of different uh, individuals that uh, are a bunch of different companies that use variants of the, the U92. And then you've got U94. U94 is probably the most visually uh, recognizable for you guys uh, because these are pretty inexpensive and this is like push to talk for the pores right here. Um, people that have purpose built 
ruggedized, uh, shielded, potentially water resistant uh, systems will normally use a variant of the U92 on a lead to a to a purpose built uh, junction box. All of your smart PTTs, things like that, they're all going to do that. Uh, when you buy a U94, all you need is a down lead cable and a connector into the radio, and you're off to the races. So these can be manufactured extremely uh, easy and home shop built. Okay, so you'll see a lot of these in the Milsim market because they can get these hook military style um, headsets to them, and then craft or or fashion a uh, down lead to a plug that interfaces with a civilian radio. So they get a military PTT, a military uh, communications set, and then it goes into a uh, military radio pouch, and then the civilian radio is hidden or concealed in, in there um, to, to give them the, the you know aesthetic. So where is a copy of U92? Here's one right here. All right, so that's the U92 plug. I don't think I have a U94 uh, clicky thing anywhere. Uh, those things kind of let me down in combat one too many times, and I quit uh, I quit carrying U94s if I could get away with it. Um, they did not like being in, the, in torrential downpours very well. Uh, what is another kind of midline uh, connector that is gaining uh, prevalence? Fisher plugs. Specifically, the Ultimate, Ultimate series. The Ultimate 7 is uh, the most prolific that I have seen. These are custom configurable by this Swiss, I think they're Swiss, this Swiss company, um, Fisher, and they make plugs for all sorts of stuff. Um, but you contact them and tell them how many pins, how many connections on the inside you need. E each pin is a different electrical line going down. So you can push power, you can push data, you can push, uh, you know, um, impulses for RF, uh, speaker receive, speaker transmit. Here's an example of a Fisher plug on, and it only has four pins in it, and it transfers power from the PVS31 Alpha, L3 PVS31 Alpha battery box uh, into uh, the side of uh, PVS31 Alpha. The uh, People that have Anvis, that have the hot shoe Anvis mount and the battery box, that silver click-in adapter on the side of a flight helmet or a, uh, a cool guy's helmet, that, that's a Fisher, uh, Fisher connector from that company as well. But the Ultimac, uh, Ultimate uh, style of cables is coming on very, very strong. That is a, an Ultimate 7, and this is an Ultimate 7. This is the pigtail down lead to an ops core uh, amp headset. So it has 10 pins of uh, data, leads, info, whatever going on in there. So 10 pin design, waterproof, uh, quick, quick disconnect. So they wanted to have the ability to have a very um, secure system like the Peltor, which is hardwired, but allow the uh, user to totally remove their comm lead when they just want to use their uh, ops core amp as a as range ear pro. All right. Now let's talk about down lead into the radio. On the military side, ground, uh, and some of the air stuff, U299, and you'll see I have here family. You will see U238, U328, U2. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, the thing that you need to know is that um, 
all of this stuff will all hook to one another, but they might not all be wired to hook to one another. Uh, this is uh, this is known as uh, NATO six pen. You'll see in this drawing and this drawing, this is the female that goes to the, the communications lead. This is the male that is normally located on top of your radio. Uh, they're called NATO six pen, but you also have these here. And on a lot of military radios, uh, the center pen, when that um, plug is configured to go into a military radio, it will be dead. So it'll be a six pin connector with one of the pins, and it might not actually be the center one, uh, but usually it is, which will, it'll be dead. And it plugs right into a five pin uh, connector. Even if the pin, the sixth pin is still active, if there's only five pins on the jack, it's just not gonna mate up. Where you have problems is if you have a radio transmitter that needs six pins, in order to, to, to do what it needs to do, and uh, and you only have a five-pin um, connector. So uh, it's kind of simple, and for like just push to talk, transmit, receive, it, it is kind of simple, but when you start talking about passing data, passing power, now you have to be uh, smarter about what, what's going on and do the research don't just see a stub like that on top of a, a thumbnail on the internet and be like, oh yeah, my thing can interface with that or whatever. You, you've got to ask the question. Before you spend any money on a push to talk or tactical system, you need to call the people that are going to custom build it for you and tell them exactly what you want to plug it into. And they'll know. There are pin diagrams that show what each one of these connectors do, each one of these hot shoes do, and they're on the internet. You can, you can go look for them. But so you're uh, here's a six pin on a uh, Raycal brand um, 148 and bitter uh, lapel mic. So there you go. I'm trying to keep this video short. The, the gear show and tell is, is more for the next video. All right. So when we say six pin military, that that that's the radios that we're looking at plugging into. Converting or using your tactical stuff for commercial, milsim, ham HT, FRS, that's where you start to see this as more of an industry standard. All right, Kenwood two pin. The reason why I'm bringing it up is because, and this is the problem with uh, just saying two pin, two pin, two pin, two pin. Uh, I had cops ask me about the specifically about the Ops Core Soders communications uh, cable. Hey man, will will that plug right into to the FRS or or uh, Handy Talkie or and I, no, <laughs> no, it will not. Two two pin Nexus. Two pin Kenwood. Kenwood, Kenwood two pin is a standardization of the spacing between the two plugs so that you have commonality across radios. These are not proprietary. That's an audio jack and a mic jack, 2.5 and 3.5 uh, millimeter. Kenwood, because when the when the all a bunch of these handhelds and stuff started coming out. Companies were doing whatever they wanted to do, and and you you were getting pin crash into the side of the uh, the radio because they were too close or too far apart or whatever, and and uh, the Kenwood two plug kind of uh, standardized um, that that commercial side. So, just wanted to uh, to throw out a uh, shout out to the two pin. So for a bunch of y'all. Two pins were two pin on the, on the down termination side is where you're going to want to be living. All right, my, that two pin connector works in obviously my, my Kenwood two pin connector works in my Kenwood HT. It also works in my Fingang uh, five watts of coronavirus radio. So there you go. 
All right. Last one we're going to talk about before, I, before we cut this is Ten Pen Tempest. Ten Pen Tempest competed with Six Pen NATO for uh, elements that needed a dive capability. Uh, the way Ten Pen Tempest connects creates a waterproof seal, whatever, um, and allows you to di dive your stuff. Tempest uses a thread on to compress down an O-ring and uh, and lock up that connection. So it is not quick to attach. It is no there's nothing easy about getting Tempest uh, qu quickly on and off in a breakaway style. So when you look at older uh, uh, maritime or swimmers headsets, they normally had your comms and then a line to a PTT, but there was no breakaway there, and then a line to the radio, and there was no breakaway there. So if you had uh, a Maritime 148 in kit and a swimmer's headset attached to your head, if you doffed your kit, you needed to remove the headset and leave the headset with the radio. And that's why you'll see some of the early GWAT footage. You'll see the mesh, uh, what we call the secret uh, or the Davies Urban uh, headset, you would see the maritime version of that and the, it, with the green uh, netting that went over the head and the black strap, you would see that hanging off of the antenna of uh, some squids uh, or devil dogs um, comm setup on their vest when they had taken their helmet off and they were doing the cool guy post photos. They were doing that because they couldn't get, they couldn't disconnect. It was all, all one line. Tempest connectors are also extremely expensive. Uh, they're over 200 bucks. So uh, any PTT system that you buy with a 10 pin is going to be uh, more expensive because you're just paying for connectors that, that are uh, much, much more expensive. So anyway, I'm going to talk through different headsets, talk through the uh, plug-in procedures, talk through all of that. A lot more hands-on show and tell in another video. But I wanted to uh, to get this one out there so that you guys could start listening because I'm going to start using two pin this, the whatever, whatever, whatever in these new videos. And I've given you guys blow ups and nomenclature so you can stop this video, write it down and then go do your own Internet research to find out what connectors are right for you and your system based on uh, the hardware that you have. Guys, this is Chuck from Press Check Training and Consulting. Uh, thanks for stopping by. If you're a first time listener, whatever, click on the like, subscribe, uh, whatever people are supposed to say on stupid ass YouTube. I will, uh, I'll talk to you guys later. See you in another video. All right.